Hello and welcome to this session in which we'll discuss accounting for warranties or guarantees. In this session, the term warranty and guarantees are used interchangeably. So what is a guarantee? Well, when you purchase something, a car, a TV, a stereo, whatever you are buying, a piece of furniture, the seller or the manufacturer offer you a guarantee. In other words, if something happened to that product, if it doesn't meet certain specification, if it breaks within a certain period of time, we will make you whole. That's what a guarantee is. So it's a promise that the product meets certain specification in the contract. Otherwise, we will make you whole. We would replace it, fix it, whatever we have to do. Now, why is this topic important for revenue recognition? Well, here's why. Because companies might make sales in year one and gives warranty. And that warranty could run through year two and year three. Simply put, here's what's going to happen. The company will make a sale here in year one. Then they will offer you a guarantee. If anything happened within the next two years, okay, during this period, we will make you whole. Well, that's fine. Now, from an accounting perspective, here's what's going to happen. If we make the sale in year one, this is when the sale took place. And let's, as let's assume the customer came back, nothing happened in year one. And the customer came back in year two and asked for a repair, ask for the product to be replaced, ask for a part to be replaced. What's going to happen is this. If we don't do anything about those guarantees or warranties in year one, here's what's going to happen. The sale took place in year one. The expense will take, will take place in year two. Well, this is a violation of the matching principle. If you made a sale in year one, all the related expenses to that sale should be recorded in year one. And this is why we need to learn about account accounting for warranties to match the expenses to the sale in the same year. So what we have to do is we have to estimate what would our guarantee and warranty be and book the warranty in year one. And this is what we need to learn in this session. So this is why this is part of the revenue recognition, because you need to know when you book a sale and if there's a warranty, you need to book the related expense for that sale in the same period. Don't worry, we'll work an example. We have two types of warranties that we need to be familiar with. One is assurance type. And this warranty is sometimes called manufacturer warranty. And that's included in the price of the products. When you buy the product, they will tell you, look, this product comes with two year or three year warranty. You don't have to pay for the extra cost. Usually when you buy a car, they give you like three year plus certain uh, mileage, whatever, whichever comes first. But this is what's called assurance type. So there is no payment here. You don't pay for this warranty. This is the warranty that we are discussing here. Basically the promise that the product will work as expected. Then we have another type of warranty called service type warranty. Service type warranty is when, is when the seller asks you to buy additional warranty beyond, for example, if this is two year, they would say, okay, if you pay an additional $200 or some amount, we will give you another three years of additional warranty on this product. So two plus five, now you're up to five years. If, if you did buy this service warranty. So the service warranty, it's an additional protection beyond the assurance warranty. Bear in mind, this is paid for separately. So if you want a service type warranty, and believe me, phone companies, uh, Best Buy or electronics, they would love to sell you those service, service type warranties. In my opinion, if I have a year or two on a product, that's good enough. If something's gonna happen, it's gonna happen early on, also a car. So this is what a service type warranty is. And this for this warranty, we're going to record a separate performance obligation. So this warranty is separate than the what we discussed what we discussed minutes ago, where we have to account for the revenue and the expense in the same period. This is a separate contract. So the service type warranty will be a separate contract, and obviously we'll work an example explaining this service type warranty. Before we look at the example, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I don't replace your accounting courses. My job, my goal is to be a useful addition to be a supplemental material to your CPA review course, to your accounting courses. My motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting students one at a time by providing new lectures, resources, multiple choice, true false that are aligned with your courses. Everything is broken down by chapter. This is a partial list of my courses. My CPA material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. So it's very easy to follow between your CPA review course and my courses. I give you access to the original 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions, almost 
1,500 questions in their original format plus detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And right now I started a CPA exam group on GroupMe. So please join us so we can discuss CPA with other candidates. So let's take a look at this example. Adam Electronics sold 10 flat screen TV on November 1st, year X1, for a total price of 4000 The cost for Adam Electronics is 1500 the assurance type, the assurance warranty for the products is two years with an estimated cost of 600. So we sold the TVs and we said, okay, if anything happened for the next two years, we will guarantee your TV. We think our cost for that warranty is $600. We are going to incur $600. Now, in addition to the assurance type, Adam sold extended warranties related to six flat screen TVs for additional three years for a price of $300. So what happened is we sold the TVs, gave them more assurance warranty for two years. We think it's gonna cost us $600. In addition, six customers, six of the 10, we're gonna assume each individual bought one flat screen TV, six customer bought the extended warranty and in total they paid $300. So it appears to be $50 per extended warranty. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna debit cash 4,300. Why 4,300? 4,000 is the sale and 300 is for the extended warranty. Therefore, we're going to credit sales $4,000 for the TVs. We're going to credit unearned warranty revenue $300. Now, please make sure to make, to make a T account for this unearned warranty revenue because eventually unearned revenue will have to be turned into revenue and we're going to see when. So just make a note of it for now. Also, we're gonna to have to debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for 1500 to account for the cost that Adam incurred to purchase those TVs. Are we done yet? No. What we have to do now, since we have an assurance warranty involved, we have to record the expense and the liability for that assurance liability because we don't know when the customer comes back for service, but we have to record the expense in the same period that the sale takes place. Therefore, we debit warranty expense 600, credit warranty liability 600. And, and this is a good illustration, whether it's for inventory or warranty, good illustration of the matching principle. We make the sale, we make the sale on November 1st, and all the expenses related to that sale, cost of goods sold and warranty expense are recorded in that same date. Now, some companies don't book this expense and liability till the end of the year. Some textbook, they don't book this expense and liability till the end of the year or the end of the period. I make it, I, I book it this way to show you the matching concept that on the same day that you made the sale, that you made the sale, there was an expense related to that sale and you record the expense in the same period. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I mean by, you know, some companies don't book it till the end of the period. Okay, now, now we have a warranty liability with a balance of $600 we're starting with. On December, on December, um, I don't know, on December 5th, it doesn't matter when, X1, in the same year, in the same year, Adam incurred labor cost of 75 and part cost of 25 related to the assurance warranty. What does that mean? It means one or two customers let's say one customer came back, they needed some parts replaced, it was $25, and we assign an employee to work on it, the employee cost us $75. Now what do we have to do? Now we have to start to reduce our liability. We're gonna debit liability $100 because we already recorded the expense. So this is when the customer comes back, there is no expense. Why? Because we booked the expense when the transaction took place. And we credit Salary, wage, salary and wages payable for 75, credit inventory parts for 25. And this was in December, I said December 5th, it doesn't matter when, but it's December 20X1. So it's in the same period. So here's what companies would do, or some textbook would do. What some textbook would do, they will not, so let me first show you the warranty liability. So what's gonna happen is after we book this entry, after we book this entry, our warranty liability is $500. Here's what some textbook and some CPA review courses would do. What they would do is they will not book this entry first. So they will they will not book this entry first. What they do is when the customer comes back in the same period, they debit warranty expense 
100. They will credit salaries and wages payable 75, inventory 75. Then on December 31st of that year, which is at the end of the period, we're going to assume December 31st is the end of the period. What they would do on December 31st, they will debit warranty expense 500 and they will credit warranty liability 500 so what happened is you will end up with only 500 in warranty liability because you would you expense this you expensed 100 on december i said december the 5th and the remainder is the 500 is booked so basically the warranty liability would look something like this which is the same thing as the same balance 500 but i like to book the entry the same date the same day of the sale so it's a, it's a great illustration for what we call the matching principle in accounting now let's move on for future periods now we have a warranty liability now a balance of 500 on march 15 x2 which is year two now adam incurred labor costs of 300 related to the assurance warranty something some malfunction happened we had to send an employee to the customer and they fixed and they fixed the flat screen tv what entry do we make on march 15th we're going to debit warranty liability 300 credit salaries and wages payable 300 notice no expense we are not expensing anything because everything was expensed in the same accounting period matter of fact the same day that the sale took place now our balance in the warranty liability is 200 and this is how we will account for future costs and hopefully we will not incur more than 200 of additional warranty for the next you know till november 1st till november 1st 20x3 hopefully we don't incur more than an additional 200 dollars if if that's the case then then we'll start to account for expenses we start to account for additional expenses now that's the assurance type warranty remember what i told you earlier you also have you also have a, a service type warranty and that service type warranty kicks in november 1st 20x3 so November 1st, 20X3, the service type warranty will kick, will kick in. And remember, we have a balance of $300 of unearned revenue. Then what's going to happen is this. Starting from November 1st, 20X3 till November 1st, 20X4, we're going to earn $100 of this unearned revenue. Why? Because now we are servicing the client. This unearned warranty revenue the service type warranty now kicks in therefore what's going to happen we're going to make this entry november 1st 20x4 november 1st 20x5 november 1st 20x6 and by doing so for the next three years we would earn the revenue the unearned revenue will go down to zero and we'll have this additional warranty revenue so this is how basically this is how it works this is how it works but right now for one year the balance is 100 what should you do now to learn more about this important topic assurance accounting for guarantees or accounting for warranties go to farhatlectures.com don't hesitate work mcqs work through faults look at exercises reinforce the concepts look at additional resources and exercises that's going to help you understand this concept the cpa exam is an important part of your career your accounting courses are the foundation for your professional journey don't shortchange yourself invest Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.